Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to Fun Books and Taste Goods. And today I have with me a special guest. This is my best friend Wilson. Hi guys, how you doing? <laughs> Any shout out you want to make? Yeah, my love to Isabella and Kale, my grandchildren. Okay, so um, today what we are going to be doing is we're going to be tasting foods from Egypt. Yes, so I am very excited. So as I mentioned in the other video, this is just a, a subscription box that I subscribe to. It's called Universal Youngs. And um, so this, this this is the box from Egypt. And very nice. So this is how the box looks like. So it brings a map with exactly um, um, different parts of Egypt. So you want to hold it to this. And then, and then it has like a little booklet with um, all the uh, description of the candy and snacks that we are going to be tasting. So here, um, oh, we have, I need my glasses, okay. You need your glasses, see? Yeah. Baby glasses, see? So people, yeah. you know when you get to that age, you know that you need glasses <laughs> when you're to like, see? When yeah, you're so. <laughs> okay. So this is something called Tiger. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but we'll see the description there later on. So, and then... Another one. Oh, this one has a chili limon. Another snack called Tiger brand. Are those chips? This has been potato chips. Yeah, they got potato chips. Then this is the popcorn. It's burning barbecue popcorn. And this is like oh, like corn cones, like bugles. It looks like bugles. I remember those. Ones. Yeah, it looks like bugles. Um, and this is a mind-blowing pizza flavor. That's very Egyptian, right? Pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then this is cheese, oregano, and basil, rusty baked. <laughs> and <laughs> we have crazy tomato puffs. And How many snacks are in the box? Like 20. And then this is. Um, Jalapeno cheese pretzel. And uh, butter and herbs um, pretzels. Oh my god. Then we have waf waffers filled waf yeah, waffers filled with uh, what is halva? Halva. It's, I think it's halva a sesame and cream. So um, right here. It's made out of sesame seeds. Oh sesame seeds? Mm -hmm. Then we have spaghetti. It's called spaghetti, and it has an apple there, so I guess it's apple flavored. Another word for spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> then we have cappuccino flavored halva bar, right here. We have Giro coconut chocolate. Then we have classic butter cookies, um, the cinnamon cookie. The cinnamon cookie. Then we have the Duetto dates. That looks like a. Like a it looks like a thick noodle. Like a thick like noodle. Yeah, it looks like a thick noodle. Then we have a soft biscuit uh, filled with coated, or filled and coated with natural chocolate. Right here. Oh my god, so many candies. Um, then we have wafer biscuits filled with chocolate and coated with white chocolate. Right there. And we have wafers filled with halva and coffee cream. So they got two of these. Still the same. And we have the chocolate extra. I think um, like a little waffle. Again. A lot of waffle stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have Grezo. Um, I use cocoa cake with chocolate. Cream filling coated cream. Crazo. Crazo. Yeah, we have two of those. So let's put this box aside and let's start tasting. Mm -hmm. Um and then we have also some trivia that the box also includes some trivia. You have to put your glasses on, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Should we start with the first trivia sure, question? Sure, sure. Okay. How much of Egypt is a desert? 45%, 60%, 75%, or 90%? Okay, well, Egypt is very uh, arid. So I think it's the 90 something percent. 90%. Okay, let's see. Do I get the right answer or what? Yeah, what is the answer? Answer is believe it or not, a whooping 90% of Egypt is a desert. Fortunately, the Nile River provides the water necessary to support civilization. That explains why the Nile River Valley, despite only compromising 5% of Egypt's land, houses 99% of the country's population around the Nile River. Okay. Okay. So now let's try, let's try the first snack. Okay, that's the tiger chili and lemon. Which is this one. And it says it's the potato chips. So they're what are the calories chips. on that? Um, the, the calories are in... <laughs> you want to borrow my glasses? No, they are in, the, in, in their language. Oh, okay. But numbers. Should I have a number right Yeah, there. but it doesn't... Yeah, right here. What? 60 calories. Where do you read that? Six calories? Um, it says 10 grams approximately and is 53 calories. But I don't, I don't know how many portions. How many portions are here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go with uh, chili and lemon potato chips. You try sour lemon candy, sweet lemon desserts, and tangy lemonade. But today, you will be trying spicy lemons. Cool. Egyptians are no stranger to the far out flavor. Pickled lemons preserved in jars with salt and chilies date all the way back to the 12th century. Interesting. Today, Egyptians add them to their favorite dishes for an unmatched umani flavor, or they'll eat the preserved slices of their own, rind and all. We think you'll enjoy the flavor most of these uniqueness, uniquely addicted chili lemon potato chips. So when you eat one, you eat the whole bag, right? I don't know. Like, like, we can't because we have so many candy to taste. Let's see. Mmm, okay. yes, that's funky. That funky <laughs> smell? <laughs> yeah, smell it. It's, it's, it doesn't, it's very it, mild. But it doesn't smell like chili or lemon. No, you. it doesn't. Mm. Let me see. Let me take one. Take one. So it looks like this. It is how the, the back is it's cold right there. Taste the lemon. Yeah. The lemon is very present in the potato chip. The and chili. then the chili is after you swallow it. <laughs> it's that after I like it. It hits after, you afterwards. After you swallow it, then it hits you. Yeah. But it's not strong. Like like the, the chili thing, the the chili taste is not like it's gonna burn you or anything. It's just like it's a very good kick. Very good kick. What I like is you taste the lemon first and then at the end. At the end you, you taste the chili. Oh, very, 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 very good. Let me just I should get a napkin. Take, um, to take the I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Take the flavor out. So then the next one that we are gonna do is the Kona popcorn burning barbecue, which is this one right here. Okay. Do you wanna read this yes. one? <clears throat> Kona popcorn burning barbecue. Spicy barbecue popcorn. There are two types of burns Egyptians encounter on a regular basis. Some burns, which is partly why Ancient Egyptians wear so much makeup, face makeup, okay? Mm -hmm. And grill burns. The latter is because barbecue, locally called mashiwijat. I'm sorry if any Egyptians are listening to me. I don't know if I'm pronouncing know it right, right, but it's one of Egypt's most popular cuisines. Encompassing everything from kebabs. I, I always have a hard time with that. The word. Kebabs. kebabs to grill kofta. To even pigeon. Mm, tasty. Okay, no, not really. You get a taste of Egypt's obsession with barbecue in this burning barbecue inspired popcorn. Way more pleasant than a sunburn, don't you think? Mm hmm. Let's find out. And this one is um, um, 45 calories. 
Um, perfect. So, not that bad. Mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah, the barbecue. barbecue. Yeah, it's very strong. So that's how yeah. it looks like right there. Okay, so take one. Take two. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> really like it. I like the barbecue flavor. What do you think? It has a good coating of barbecue. Yeah, it does. And this is the first time I have barbecue popcorn. Yeah, why, never why there's no barbecue popcorn here? It's really, um, I mean, if you like barbecue potato chip, you definitely will like this. Mm -hmm. hmm. nice and, um, but I don't feel like here, like here it has a, like a, the sauce and has like a chili. Because supposedly it's, that, it's huh? burning barbecue. Yeah, oh. in no, reality, it's not burning. It's right? not burning barbecue, it's just barbecue. Like I yeah, don't. Like a right? nice barbecue sauce. But like I don't not, see. No, um, it's not that hot. Mm -mm. No. And apparently they have other flavors, like the, the same company. And they whatever. describe it as a sunburn, you know, like hot. Like it's maybe very, like very hot. hot. But nah. it wasn't, yeah. No. You want to do another Quick trivia? Flavor. Yes, let's do another trivia. Okay. Okay. Here's my glasses. Let's see here. I like the one uh, we were talking about. Um, let's see here. Wait. <laughs> Over this one here. Okay. Which of the following is an Egyptian culinary tradition? A. Salty dried locust. B. Rancid mullet fish. C. Sandy pita bread. Or D. Smoked papyrus. I don't know what papyrus is. That's a type of uh, paper that they used to make out of like a bamboo. Okay. The, the ancient uh, paper. The, the sandy pita bread? No. Sandy pita bread? No. Okay. No, but the answer is, is the rancid mullet fish. Mm, and it yummy. says, very, yeah, it says, an Egyptian dish made of rotting fish called mm. fishish. It's a local staple. It's been tradition ever since the time of pharaohs after rotten fish were left behind when the water level of the Nile receded in the spring. Oh, that sounds so yummy. That's so yeah. delicious. It is delicious. I want to taste that. <laughs> Nowadays, it's a dish best ordered from the pros. Prepare un incorrectly. Fishiks can result in violent food poisoning. Yeah, we think we'll stick to yummies. But if you want, if you want to lose weight fast, <laughs> just go for it. Yeah, that's the best way. You know, you probably lose like forty pounds in a day. Okay. Good, good, good. So let's try the next snack. The next snack is this one right here. Okay, Sakalan's waffle, halawa, and coffee. Okay, waffle with sesame and coffee cream. How do you take your coffee? If you're a guest in an Egyptian home, you're bound to hear the question. Though it's probably be in Arabic. And it's considered a most to a set. You can take your pick of a super bitter brew, posada, mildly sweet, aria, medium sweet, masbut, or very sweet, sijada. Or if you're lucky, you can take it in the form of a sweet sesame paste filled waffle. Fi sa ikum. In Arabic, that means cheers. Cheers. Say it again. But like. Pisa, what is it? Pisa ikum. Mm. Pisa ikum. Mm. So then this is um, one, the serving is one pack and this is 90, 90 calories per serving. And let's share one. They brought two, but let's just share okay. one. Sure. Because. <laughs> <laughs> if oh, you're going to eat it. The camera is shaking. We can move, put the hands here because okay, the camera is shaking. Yeah, okay. You want me to get it? <laughs> I'll. <laughs> I see. Uh, if I think open it. Try to. Do the other side. Yes. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> okay, nice. God. It's adult proof, child proof. It's oh, yeah. Wait, let me go and get uh, <laughs> Oh my god, seriously? You're gonna get a scissor? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> oh my god. Let me take it just in case. Okay. <laughs> uh, so then this is what it looks it looks like a normal waffer. So, so let's see what this looks like. Let me just take a 
here. And it said sesame and coffee cream. Good, very dry. Very dry. Yeah, make sure you have water. Surprisingly, it is very dry. But the flavors are good. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit but, of bitterness. But it's mild too. And the flavors are very mild. At the end? I just thought it was like very dry. But I didn't, I didn't taste the... It's a little bit bitter. All right, I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, it's okay. It's just... It's not, it's not wild. Yeah. Whatever. It's not well. Okay, what's the next one? Next one is... Just make sure it is. Okay. Chocolate wave hazelnut. Chocolate covered wafer with hazelnut cream. Not so fast. Egyptian friendliness works both ways. When visiting someone else's home, it's customary for the guests to bring their host a gift. Okay. Which he didn't, he didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I was expecting a gift from you. And, uh, uh, <laughs> since most Egyptians don't drink alcohol, but we do, <laughs> and flowers are reserved for somber occasions, that gift is nearly always chocolate. For example, this milk in your mouth waffle with gooey hazelnut cream and rich milk chocolate coating will definitely do the trick. If you are strong enough to be part of it, of course. So let's find out. Let's find out. And this one is 280 calories for this package. And the other one was how many calories you um, said? 90. It was 90. So that explains the dryness. Okay? <laughs> 90 and 250. Well, this one is chocolate filled too. So. It's a, and it's creamy. Like just right it's like Why I cannot open anything? Okay, now got here. It? Yeah, I got it. It's very thick. Ooh, See? Nice. It is. I think I can melt it a little bit, but. It's, this is the thickness. It's very thick right there. You look at your face. You like it? Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to put the elbow because you're going to shake no. the camera. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. It is. And the chocolate makes it creamy. But the aftertaste is weird. You know, something with Egyptian um, candies, they're not as sweet as mm -mm. American okay, yeah. candy, right? Yeah, maybe that's Everything why it's a little bit... Maybe that's why they're thinner. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why Americans are fat? No. 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 The, um, the, uh, it is... Mm, um, it's funny because every time I eat chocolate um, candy from other countries, I always compare it to the chocolate that I eat here. And, and the ch this is very um, mild chocolate. Mm, yeah. And then the aftertaste for it, some it reason is creamy. Is weird. Yeah, it's creamy. It is creamy, but and the aftertaste is it has like a little aftertaste. Mm. Um, not bitter. What what would you say? What kind of that? I don't know. It's very. Like when you like pasty, it's very yeah, pasty. pasty. It's very yeah. So like I, I feel that you like the, I don't know, like kind of the fat. It stays in your oh, no, no, it yeah. coats your tongue. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. It's true. Okay. Let's see. So this one I need water. I need to like take that. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Dueto, mm. biscuit cookie with date filling. That's the one that looks like the baking it. This one right here. If you're looking for dates, Orlando, if you're looking for a date, uh -huh, I'm always looking for the dates. fruit kind, not the romantic kind. Uh -huh. There's no better place than Egypt's Nile River Valley. For millennia, this especially fertile region has produced more dates than anywhere else in the world. Thousands of years ago, dates were pressed into wine. Dates is not wine. Okay. I like that. Okay. Today, they used to make. Um, I don't know that word, so I'm just gonna say they used to the, make the delicious the crumbly <laughs> cookies like this one. Grab a cookie. You've got a date with history. Oh, that's a pun. So this is uh, 110 calories on the serving sizes too. Um, <laughs> God, like oh my God, Orlando, come on. 
Okay, okay let's let's do it. This way. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, um... Oh, but they're nice and soft. Mm-hmm. So, look. So, let's see. <laughs> Try. I mean, the date, I love the date in the middle. The cookie itself is... Make sure when you have these kind of desserts, a little bit of water. It's chalky. Like. It has great, the flavor I love. It, it's very good flavor. I'm not a big fan of dates, so maybe that's why, because I don't like thick things, um, so, you know, but. But I think like it's dry too. But I, I, well, it's very like, crumbly, yeah. Yeah. You see? What do you think about it? Huh? You like it? Um, I like the, the flavor I like. Mm -hmm. Let's do another trivia. Okay. You want to do it this time? Okay, let's see. Um, it says... Um, I don't need a glass of the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these landmarks was meant to stand in Egypt? The Statue of Liberty? The Linnet Tower of Pisa, the Washington Monument, or the Eiffel Tower? I think. I think it was the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty? Let me see. And you are right. It says, you may know the Statue wow. of Liberty was given to the US by Frenchman Frederick Bartholdi. But did you know he originally designed the statue as an Arab woman about that. for Egypt's Suez Canal? Egypt's ruler rejected the expensive design, so Bartholdi repurposed it for the United States. No. I did not know that. No, that's... Hmm. Okay. So the next one is Kono Puffs Crazy Tomatoes. Tomato Corn Puffs. This one right okay. here. Unlike dates, tomatoes were only introduced to the Middle East 200 years ago. Oh. And yet today, Egypt is the fifth largest tomato producer in the world. You do it. No, how do they do it? The answer takes us to the city called the Tent of Ramadan, where cutting edge greenhouse technology has turned 2,500 acres of desert into a fertile farmland. The greenhouses produce an abundance tomatoes and use 40% less of Egypt's scarce water supply in the process. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, now, not only can Egyptians enjoy fresh tomatoes practically all year round, but they form the basis of deliciously addictive tomato snacks like these. Corn pops, crazy tomato. And this is 45 calories per bag. And that's each, it's how many portions? One? It's one, the one bag. Oh, not bad. And what I noticed like, um, well, some bags, these are these bags are smaller as if you compare to this ones, which I think they're bigger. But this one, usually the the snacks are like um the the this one. Okay. The mm. Oh my god, you smell the tomato. Right away. Yeah. <laughs> right away. You open the bag. It's mm, good. good. Take one. Great smell. It's like tomato soup. I mean, you're right. It is <laughs> right? like tomato soup. Um, you're mm -hmm. expecting like a cheese flavor because there are little corn puffs, but corn soup. I mean, um, tomato, tomato soup. soup. It's really good. That's I, that, I like. So that far, one. this is my favorite so far from all this night that we have tasted. So. Yeah. Because he's gonna choose his favorite and his least favorite, yeah. and I'm gonna do the same thing at the end of all. Of so that try one. This one is the one for me. And so far, which one was the least? Uh, I don't know. 
so far for me is the dates because I don't like dates. Yeah. So. I also I like that, that first, the first chips that we opened. That one, the chili. Oh, the chili, chili one. one. Okay. So the next one is next. Uh, this one. It's Shamadan White. White chocolate covered waffle with cocoa yeah. cream. In its long history, the city of Alexandria has had more than its fair share of marvels. There was Farrell's, a 330-foot tall lighthouse that for centuries was the tallest man-made structure in the world. And of course, the enormous library of Alexandria, once the world's largest library that had over 400,000 scrolls. Nowadays, though, the city is home to a much more modern and mouth-watering marvel. Um, that's the Shamadan factory where the luxur luxurious white chocolate waffle was created. A marvel indeed. So that's supposed to be a real good waffle. Okay, and this, this is 220 calories per the whole bar. That's, if you like white chocolate, you might like this one. Keep open for some reason. My yeah. fingers, I, I, I don't know if they're like wrapped with. Okay, come on. Okay. 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 Only like. Coated on one side. I could say it's better. Coated on one side. And... Mm -hmm. For some reason, I have like a strawberry flavor, but not. But. I like it. I like it, but the thing that I found with the chocolate is that the aftertaste is fat, it's fat, it, it's fat in it. <laughs> it um, <laughs> you know, like it's not oily. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's not like Swiss chocolate or Belgian chocolate that it's very smooth. That one you could taste like the fat. And the flavor is <laughs> oh, like, oh. I think it's like the fat stays in your in your mouth. In your mouth, it coats your mouth and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. Flavor is good. Flavor is good. Now this one I'm excited because I love coconut because I'm from Puerto Rico. He's from Puerto Rico yeah. too, and we, we in Puerto Rico coconut. we have coconut. We have a coco, lot coco, coco, of, of candy, <laughs> uh, of coconut-based candy in Puerto Rico. Yeah, we do. Okay. Stop shaking the camera. Do, do, do you have a box from Puerto Rico? Do what? Are, are you gonna get a box from? I don't know. I may. Mean, snacks. I don't know because each, each, month, be nice. each month is different. Okay. So. Jero Coconut Bar, chocolate covered coconut bar. Lastly, let's head to the Valley of the Kings so you can taste Pharaoh's perfume. In ancient Egypt, only the wealthy could afford to import coconuts from India, making them an elite status symbol. King Tut, a teen pharaoh in the 14th century BC, was one of the lucky few. He used coconut and tree resin to craft his signature scent jars of which were found on his tomb. While we don't often find ourselves recommending you eat ancient perfume, this foamy chocolate covered coconut bar is a tasty exception. And here I can find You won't food. regret it. I'm trying to find the calorie content and I use one here. Let me see. Mm -hmm. um. Well, it's probably here, but like all these, but it's written in, in Arabic. Oh, he's right here. So the Jiro, the hero, or G, how do you pronounce it? Jiro, hero? Jiro? Jiro. Jiro. Jiro is 80 calories. 80, so calories. 80 calories. Yeah. It's a nice little bottle. Uh oh, it's <laughs> oh, I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like it's a snap. bounty, you remember like a bounty. And it's like kind of marshmallow right? Mm-hmm. Like a oh, it is like a nugget, like a nougat, right? Nougat, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, I like this one. But again, the coconut flavor is very mild, but it's there. It's there, yeah. Like the I like this. Like the, the coconut inside the, an almond joy, a mouse. Mm -hmm. It's sweeter. And the coconut flavor in those are stronger. But this is good. And I like the portion size. It's nice and small. Mm -hmm. And satisfies your craving. Mm -hmm. It's good. Good. I like it. 
Mm-hmm. 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 Mm
It says, minerals were grounded to make the world's first eye makeup. I know the eye makeup. Worn yeah. by men and women. Tree resin. Yeah, you see all the makeup we have here. <laughs> tree resin, honey, and cinnamon were used to make the first breath mints. Yeah, I remember they said something. Porcelain, porcelain balls and alabaster vases were used in the first version of bowling. Oh, wow. Okay. And mint, iris flower, and, pe and pepper made the first toothpaste. Ooh, ooh. Okay. You want to do another one? Yes, I'm going to do this one here. I thought it was okay. funny. For all those women that are not married out there, this is for you. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Um, it's local tradition for okay. It's local tradition for guests in Egyptian households to a knock three times before entering. Okay. Okay. B kiss the host in the chin. Okay. Kiss me in the chin. No. <laughs> <laughs> C finish any juice they've been offered, or D bring casserole as a gift. I'm gonna say bring casserole as a gift. That's something you used to you pretty much do all the time. <laughs> okay, let's find out. Um, it's C. It's finish any juice they've been offered. Uh -huh. It's a bottoms up. In Egypt, it's well known fact that if you're offered juice in someone else's home, you better finish it. Especially if the host has a daughter. If you don't, it's believed that she'll remain unmarried. How sad, That's right? cool, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, finishing the juice shouldn't be hard. Egypt's most popular priority sugarcane juice is made of deliciously fresh local sugarcane. And yeah. you told me about your grandmother when you used to go to her house. Yeah, like, like you know, like um, in Puerto Rico, we have something similar, but it's like if, if, if you go and visit someone in Puerto Rico and they offer you food yes. and they serve the food, you better, you better eat, eat it. it all. You better eat right? it because now they feel offended because they cook because they're respecting you and they cook and so, yeah, so go, it's, whatever it's, they cook you have to eat, eat if yeah. they feel offended. And they'll sit in front of you and they'll go like this. <laughs> and they'll look, um, point at the plate. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, so next is so we did this one. Oh, this the cinnamon cookie. It's this one right here. Cinnamon butter cookies, that sounds good. In 320 BC, the Greeks and Romans thought cinnamon was sourced from the nest of giant vultures who collected it from far off lands unknown to mankind. In actuality, it came from the bark of trees in Ceylon, modern day um, Sri Lanka. But savvy Egyptian traders kept their source totally hush hush, enabling them to make a killing selling the spice and confusing the Europeans in the process. Go ahead and crunch into these crumbly cinnamon cookies and enjoy them free of fear of vulture attacks. Mm. So this one is um, four cookies. It's 120 calories for four cookies. How many calories? 120. Okay. If, you four eat, cookies. if you eat the whole box, it's 350 calories. Okay. I would eat the whole box. <laughs> and the put tape here. Well, they come like this. And they're pretty small. Pretty small cookies. Uh -oh. Let's see. Break my left hand. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I find it dry again. <laughs> Oh, they're, are they biscuits? They're biscuits, right? There's some cookies. Oh, cookies, yeah. I mean, I'm going to just call it biscuits, right? This mm. would be good if you dip them in coffee or something. And I think they would be served in Egypt if you go to a household that can like coffee tea. or tea. Yeah. And, you know, with this, with Pick a, a, top, a cup of tea. It needs something. Fine. Like, it needs. I mean, you wouldn't eat them by yourself. Right? I don't think so. Yeah. You need something. You need like a tea? 
or coffee or something. Or dip them in milk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like the you know. But the cinnamon flavor is not really it's, there that much. It's, it's just mild. Very mild. But it's there. Like it's, it is there, but it's not there. I don't know if you know what I mean. Like it's there, but it's not. Like you could tell. Mm -hmm. Actually, the only reason I know it's cinnamon is because I read it. Right. If I that's like, good. like. I will, be, I, will be get, I will be guessing, I'm like, what is this? Is this yeah, like, I know. Is this like brown sugar? Is this like... You know, when I eat like a cinnamon cookie, I'm thinking like spice, you know, like spices, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But this is like, it's a nice little cookie. But right now, if I, if I didn't know that it's a cinnamon, exactly. I would Exactly, you know, you want yeah. yeah. So. Now let's just rinse your palate. I'm trying to eat like one of each because too many, too many sweets. Okay. <sighs> okay. So the next one is this one. Uh, spaghetti apple. Okay. This little thing right here comes from the word what? Spaghetti. Spaghetti it's an apple. It's a gummy green apple strip. Okay. Sure, the ancient Egyptians may have invented trivia spoiler eye makeup. Mm -hmm. Okay. Toothpaste, bowling, and the first prosthetic limb. Don't get excited because <laughs> it was a toe. Yeah. It was prosthetic a what? toe. Oh, prosthetic toe. Yeah. But here's one thing they could never have dreamed of. A string a stringy green apple gummy. It's not just because green apples were first grown in Australia in 1868. This addictively Juicy gummies are made in Egypt, Food Group, a local company that only opened its doors in the year 2000. So ready to taste a totally 21st century Egyptian invention. You having trouble with that? <laughs> yeah, but I can breathe. Yeah. Oh my God. Try to open the lid. Okay, let me... <laughs> it's the greasy from the potato <laughs> chips. <laughs> open it. Uh, it's the grease from the chips. Okay. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> So it is like, see, it's like, like stringy, see, like oh, cheese. Like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Nothing to brag about. It tastes like Twizzlers. But you know what? It's not even that sweet. I think I think American candy we put too much sugar. Yeah. And this we are is, so um, and we are so so used to sugar because sugar is like a drug, it's like it's addictive. And I think us here in the United States, all the candy are very sweet. And then maybe when you taste a different candy from a different part of the world, the sugar level is less. Mm -hmm. It's like the same like like like, mm -hmm. like like it's like like portion sizes, like we are so used to everything to be big. And then when you get a when you go to a different country and everything is smaller, you're like okay. Right. Um, the same thing with the sugar level. Like I but, think everything here has not been sugary at all. Right. And, nothing. and usually like, their nothing, dessert, like, their nothing. dessert, Middle Eastern desserts yeah. are like that. Um, they use very little sugar. But then baklava is sugary and it's delicious. I don't know if the baklava no, here yeah, the baklava is different. The it's honey, different. It's the yeah, it's different. Yeah. I don't know if the baklava here is different than the baklava over there, the way they make it. But, but uh, this one has like an artificial, you know. Like, like a fake flavor? flavor? Fake flavor, yes. Mm -hmm. no, it wasn't that. But it wasn't sweet. That's yeah. Sweet. So now let's go to the, the cones. The... Cone of corn cones, mind-blowing pizza. Mm -hmm. Pizza corn snacks, right from Egypt. You probably associate pizza with Italy. Yes, we do. But we've got two tidbits that will make you think of Egypt instead. First, the ancient Egyptians were cooking, topping garnish flatbreads all the way back in the 12th century before Christ. 3,000 years before tomato paste pizza was made in Naples. Mm. Okay. Those centuries of practice might explain the second fact. As of 2020, 20% 20 of all pizza makers in Italy are actually Egyptians. Wow, oh, that's, wow. I don't know that. 
Is your mind blown? <laughs> <laughs> Time to give these addictively crispy pizza cones a try and see if they live up to their name. And this is 130 calories. For the whole bag? For the whole bag. See, why can't it open? See, I can open this very, very easily. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so you can smell the pizza. Oh my. You can see. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you smell the pizza right away. Yeah. yeah. It's like walking Take into one. a pizza place. And you see, yeah, you see, like, it's, mm. very, it's coated with, like, oregano and stuff. I like this. Mm. But the smell, it, it, this is one that we, the smell is exactly what it tastes like, mm -hmm. you know? This is delicious. It really is. Mm -mm. Mm. This is very, very good. Yeah. It has a very strong pizza flavor. But it's very good. It's very good. I like it. I could have like a beer and a bag of that. Are you, are you alcohol free? <laughs> it is good. It is delicious. Let's keep this it one as one of the top The ones. top ones? Very, very good. Okay, Wilson. Okay. The workers who built the pyramids were given daily rations of beer. You know that answer? Right? Yeah, yeah. It was corn, salt, beer, and apples. And the answer is beer. Do you think to build and those pyramids <laughs> they had to be super drunk? Because they work day and night. Every day, the workers who built the pyramids were given over one gallon of beer. They drank it from a giant communal jugs using straws made from reeds. Enjoying beer wasn't limited to the living. Either mummies were often buried with it, as Egyptians believed their dearly departed would enjoy it in the afterlife. Excuse me, in the afterlife. Ha ha. Wow. Who knew? Beer, wine, all these things. Okay, so now is that one? It's the tiger family chips kebab. kebab. That's a big, oh, a family big chip. I think that's why the, that's a big bag. Oh, it's the family size. Yeah. Introducing the king of Egyptian street food, the kebab. After all, what's more convenient than food on a stick? But while it's effortlessly easy to eat, a lot, we mean a lot, of care goes into crafting this perfect kebab. First, the meat is marinated in a specific blend of spices, including curry, curry powder, turmeric, dry mustard, and cardamom. From there, it's screwed on onions and grilled. After tomatoes, green peppers, and mint are screwed too. So can you taste all that care of the kebab inspired crisp? Mm -hmm. So they say all those flavors are there in one chip. And this is another, like in the, now I realize that when I was looking for the calories, they, re they, they refer to calories as energy. Oh, so you yeah, see yeah. energy, then you see calories. So well, why you, burn, I'm like, you burn calories. But, but the United States is like that. You don't see energy and then says 83 calories or okay. 53 calories. Oh, so here, protein, yeah. here is 53 calories, but it's under energy. So it's 53 calories you per calories. serving. You burn calories. And, you burn calories. Yeah. Uh, and it, it is uh, 10, um, um, 10 grams um, is 53 calories. But I don't know how many grams are here. It's a big bag. It doesn't smell. You see, they did they, the description. They talk about all these flavors. Or maybe and you open it, it and it just maybe, like a okay. Maybe let's see. Just judge it when we taste it. Mm. No, it has a meat flavor. It's like <laughs> I can't be like. <laughs> oh, it's like um. I actually like. I actually like it. <laughs> no, it has a gamey flavor. No, it has like for me. I can I can actually taste the vegetables of the meat. Yeah, it's like the meat. Yeah, but if I'm mm -hmm. having chips, I don't want it. 
you know, like when you when you have like um like in um in Puerto Rico we have uh, the kebabs are called pinchos. It would be um, like a pincho. Exactly. So 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 then in Puerto Rico you take the the yeah. well it's not of pork, but you can make it with beef too, but usually it's pork. And then you have like and a chicken. pepper, and you have onion, onion. Yeah. and then if you take a bite and you grab the vegetables and the meat. That's what that tastes like. But I don't like that flavor in a, in a chili. I'd rather have the... I actually... I'd rather have this. I actually... This is very good. But what's it, the pizza one? Yeah, you like the pizza one. Yeah, the pizza. And this one, the chili and lemon. Yeah. Okay. Mm -mm. So... Now we have to go to this one. What's the occasion? Rusty cheese, oregano, and basil. Cheese, oregano, and basil, wheat snack. Right here. In Egypt, the snack is pretty much the perfect way to kick off the day. That's because cheese is a vital part of the Egyptian breakfast. Whether it is crumbled on top of a full medames, a local fava bean stew, or served in the most common form, smear atop bread and sprinkle with herbs. Oh, that sounds good. Um, in that spirit, feel free to save these extra crispy bread rusks for the morning or any time of the day. Personally, we can't stop eating them. You eat one, you eat the whole bag. That's And this is 46 calories. They have a very oh, strong they look like cheese. Yeah, but they look like they're, they're, they're like little... Um, they, like they are... Like croutons. Yeah, they look right there. That's what they look like. Grab one. It's like croutons. I like that. Mm. Basil. Why is it like olive oil? Mm. There's Dirt. no cheese flavor. It says cheese though. Yeah. But it says like, but the cheese that it has the here is like a Swiss cheese. Well. Mm -hmm. Cheese oil. Mmm. But it's true, it's addictive. <laughs> You, um, like you want to grab, you want to keep eating them. It's like, but I, you know what? Good in a salad. Like I, would yeah, put I was going to say salad. that. I was going to say that. Buy them, and you know what? You could put them on a salad. Because it's like these are like um, croutons on acid. <laughs> these are, mm. these are delicious. They're very good. <laughs> these are very good. Oh my god, these are very very good. And they have more flavors, so we don't have them, but they have like a lot of flavors. This is very good. This is good, like, this is like a very... But actually, it, is it bread? I don't know. Yeah, you, you know what we, like, if you invite someone for dinner, and then you put this in their salad, thinking that they're, you know, and then people eat the fruits, they're like, damn, these are the best fruits I ever tasted. So it is be, delicious. It is, they're good. They're, they're mm -hmm. very good. They are very good. Okay. Okay. Which of the following was discovered in an Egyptian pyramid? Dental floss? The world's oldest cinnamon? A hieroglyph of an alien? The world's oldest honey? Wait, wait, this is a child. Let's see if this one. Yes. I'm gonna say... I think I'm gonna say honey because I know they really it was very precious. Yes, no, it is honey because um, I, I I I read this in the, I saw this oh, in the yeah? documentary. It oh, says um, it's D. It is honey. It's okay. like ever wanted to eat a three thousand year old honey? Probably not. But what if we told you it was still totally it was still totally edible? In 2015, archaeologists excavating the pyramids were shocked to find perfectly preserved honey. Like us, the ancient Egyptians used it as a sweetener, but they also gave it as a gift to the gods and sometimes used it to make embalming fluid. Embalming fluid. fluid. Okay. The mummies. Oh. So that's when, it, when, they dis, when they made that discovery in 2015, that, that's when um, everybody started saying that honey did not spoil. Oh, because nobody, oh, nobody used to say that. Yeah, because nobody used to say that until they made that discovery. So now, now we know that honey doesn't spoil. You could have honey 
in the shell forever, so it doesn't yeah. doesn't have an expiration. Another anymore. thing, but when they those pyramids, they were sealed. It was like no air, nothing. Well, that's why those mummies were very well preserved. Sorry. So now we put that one. Go to depot. Depot. Okay. Soft chocolate covered biscuit with cocoa filling. Time for tea, which despite being the national drink, can get pretty divisive in Egypt. The people that live in, in the northern part drink a light koshari style made by steeping a, half, a steeping a half teaspoon of black tea in pre-boiled water, then adding mint and a bit of sugar. The people that live in the south prefer a dark brew called Saidi, made by boiling water with four times as much tea, then it sweeten it, and then they sweeten it with heaps and heaps of sugar. Fortunately, both North and South agree the tea time is better with yum, especially soft chocolate biscuits designed specifically for that occasion. And this is 270 calories. And from what the, the picture, this reminds me a lot of an Argentinian alfajor. Alfa. Alfajor. Alfajores. Alfajores, right? Uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because when I went to Argentina, there were a bunch of different flavors and different. And it looked yeah. like this, and the wrapping and everything looked almost identical. Oh, yeah. But the thing was in Spanish, and of course. And here it says tipo, and it says sub biscuit, filled with coated, filled and coated with natural chocolate. So let's see how they put a sticker here. Then, uh, see, like, um, they, put, uh, they put a label. Oh. So so we can oh, so read it. So we can read, read the. So we can read it in English. Okay. So so it's like this, a big right here. Yeah, that reminds me of the one that we had before with the chocolate. How is it? It's good, but it's milder in flavor as an Argentinian alfajor. Mm -hmm. But it's good. It's good. And again, for some reason, the aftertaste of the chocolate is oily or greasy, or I don't know how to describe no, it. It's, probably, um, mm? it's good. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just a different. The chocolate is different. So it's a. It's a. It's a. It's a different. Type of and I chocolate. think you know what it is too. The the cookie inside, it's very it's very very dry. Mm -hmm. So no, no. Yeah, um, not that it's I, not my favorite. Yeah. And it reminds me of the one that we had before, before. that was just like that. What mm -hmm. was that one? Uh, I other don't one. remember what. I don't. Remember. It was also like covered chocolate. Oh, this one. With this one, yeah, yeah. it reminds me of that one, which is the yeah, like this one right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next one is the pretzels pretzel original jalapeno cheese, jalapeno and cheese pretzels. Cheese making has a 5,000 year old long history in Egypt, meaning the country has had plenty of time to develop some unique cheeses. There's domiata, a soft white cheese produced since the Middle Ages and Rumi, a hard yellow cheese named after the Mediterranean locals who inspired it. Rumi, in Arabic, that means Roman. And of course, there's Mish, a pungent, salty cheese fermented for up to eight years. Wow. wow. It's pretty close to the honey. <laughs> Last but not least, a more recent and less fermented Egyptian cheese innovation. These finger-licking cheese pops with a lot of jalapeno kick. So I'm expecting something cheesy and very hot. And this is 100 or, calories. And it's jalapeno. Oh, the pretzels. The pretzels, yeah. Okay. Mm, doesn't smell like anything. Like anything. No, like... Mm, the jalapeno is there. Jalapeno is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that flavor. It's, just, it's a taste of the jalapeno, but not the spiciness of the jalapeno. No, 
You know it what, very know? mild, yeah, like, it's not as spicy, but the flavor mm -hmm. is there. The flavor is there. As soon as you put it in your mouth, jalapeno. Yeah, jalapeno. It's gonna yeah. be jalapeno. Yeah. Good? Like it, yeah. Okay, so now this one. Grasso, meaning crazy. Chocolate cover, chocolate cover, chocolate cake. When it comes to Aegis beloved flavors, chocolate has a much shorter history than cheese. It's native to Mexico and only became popular in Egypt in the late, in the last 50 years. But in that short time, it's become a local craze. The timing is perfect. Nowadays, two thirds of the world's chocolate comes not from Mexico, but from West Africa. The cacao travels across a con continent to Egypt, where it's made into rich concoctions like this moist crasso cake and then well we think that you know what happens next after you eat it okay so this little thing is 440 calories. yeah it's very rich it says and very moist so let's find out i love that word <laughs> i do I don't, yeah. some people hate that word and i actually moist. love that word boy i don't know why people hate that word um so this is how it looked like. Oh, uh, it looks like I'm one of those like Debbie snacks. Though. What are they called? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, like little Debbie. Yeah, little Debbie. Okay. Let's see. That's how the like, inside Very sponge. Like. Yeah. Nice sponge. It's not, it's not moist. It's super dry. <laughs> <laughs> It's the chocolate <laughs> that that <after. laughs> That's why you can't believe everything you read. Um, oh my god, I was expecting this moist cake. No. Oh. Mmm. Mm -mm. Oh my god. I have to say, every single this, I mean, every single cookie and sweet that we try with chocolate the chocolate always tastes exactly the, the same, same right yeah it's like that it's like that's the way yeah. it's made over there mm -hmm. i mean the flavor's not bad it's not bad it's just uh like after that mm -hmm. coating mm -hmm. okay okay what's the next so which of these actions is planned to relieve traffic congestion in cairo a new capital will be built nearby, the number of cars will be limited, all citizens will get a free bicycle, $5,000 will be given to anyone who moves out. Oh, that should, that's probably happening right here <laughs> in the US. <laughs> I'm not gonna go with the $5,000, but I think I'm gonna go with a bicycle. Um, um, false. A new capital will be will be built nearby. So, wow. so a new capital like Cairo capital. Let me see. In 2015, the Egyptian government began construction on a new capital located 30 miles east of Cairo, which will house the country's governmental bodies. Its population will likely be around 6.5 million people. Oh. In contrast to the whooping 20.5 million people that make up Cairo's cramped metropolitan area today. How can we build a new capital? Is it a capital already there? Well, it's like, it's like we're, gonna, we're gonna build a different one. We're gonna build another Washington DC 30 miles <laughs> up. You know what I mean? Like it I sounds know. it sounds weird, but you know. Well that's I mean they have the Yeah, the land. he had the land. Because apparently 90, what, 95, 90% of Egypt is desert, so they have a lot of land. Um, so this one now. We only have two candies left. Two candies, okay. Yes. Let's see. Um, Sakalan waffle, halawa, and cream. Water fi um, waffle filled with ground sesame and cream. Didn't we have that one before? 